Hey guys, how's it going? So this evening we're working in the flower bed directly behind the chicken coop. I saved this project to do in the evening because this whole bed is pretty much in the shade at this point, so it's much more pleasant. It got in the mid or upper 90s today, so it was pretty warm. Um, and I really wanted you to be able to see the detail of what we're working on. There are several things I have on the agenda to hopefully get done tonight. First off, we're gonna get our fountain running. No time like the present, it's only like mid-July and I haven't even turned it on once this year. I had to buy a new pump for it. So Aaron's gonna come out and help me with that step. If you would notice here, these Dalmatian peach foxgloves and the Magic Fountains cherry blossom delphiniums. These are the ones I started from seed this winter inside. Isn't that amazing? I am so proud of myself. <laughs> Don't you feel like that every time you start something from seed? Now, the delphiniums are nothing like the color that they were advertised as, but it's okay. I really like that light, light lavender. I thought they were supposed to look a little bit more plummy, like a little bit more deep, but they're still beautiful. And then on this side, I've got kind of the same thing going on. I did a drift of the delphiniums right around the new October Glory maple tree here, and then also some Dalmatian peach foxgloves right in front, some of which are blooming. I have a delphinium I need to stake. And then you can see down in here the leaves, and some of them are forming buds bloom stalks. I'm really excited. Right in front here, we have the White Wands Veronica, one of my favorite perennials. Now, I don't know if you can see right now, but there are honeybees all over. Oh, maybe more on this side where it's in the sun. Do you see all of them flying around? Maybe it looks just more like they look more thick in real life. I don't know. I think this is an amazing perennial. Now, I do notice that some have flopped a little bit. See that? I will be dividing these probably, and that'll help with the flopping issue. And then I've got some of the hookeras here. These are the wild rose, um, some of which kind of died out over the course of the winter and last summer. You might remember this is directly where the elm tree was, right here. Um, so it was very very much so filtered sun last year. And while these hookeras should be able to take full sun and they have been so far, I think it shocked some of them last summer and then they were just kind of limping by and then through the course of the winter, they just couldn't make it. But quite a few of them survived. Anyway, I got sidetracked. So we're gonna do the fountain first. Then I've got some elm seedlings or elm sprouts coming up that we're gonna handle. So I've got my uh, stump and vine killer that we're gonna take care of these with. And then we are gonna do some planting. So here in my cart, you can see some elephant ears. These are called Heart of the Jungle. Super excited about these. I've actually never grown elephant ears before, ever. Isn't that strange? Like, you see the bulbs for sale all over the place and I just never have. So I thought it would be fun to put a drift of those behind the pineapple fountain because they're supposed to get quite large. And then we'll fill in with some Golden Dreams Coleus and some Supertunia Indigo, Mini Vista Indigo. And then the very last thing, I have this bag of iron tone because I am dealing with an insane chlorosis problem out here. You see this big drift of Baptisia? That's what it should look like. And I've got like this vein of iron deficiency. So you can see the yellowing of the leaves. The veins are even starting to turn yellow. Even though like they were really dark green there for a little bit. It's just, oh, it's horrible. So it goes through here and then you can see the effects not so much on this hydrangea, but on this one over here, they're so iron deficient that they're starting to burn. See that dark green veins, yellow to white almost, it's bleaching out leaves, and then so deficient that they're burning. Which I have done one application of iron tone here, so hopefully that starts taking effect and I'll probably add more in. Plus it's hard, it's still blooming. But it almost it like keeps going. Like there's roses that are dealing with chlorosis, but the ones right to the left aren't dealing with it. It's just like this weird patch. So we've just got kind of a mixed bag of projects. I'm kind of hoping that it's fairly quickish because it is still pretty hot out here. And I really haven't done much to this bed. I, mean, I guess that's not quite true. I mean, we did plant the maple tree. We had to dig out the evergreen tree that was there and move it. And then I did plant the delphiniums and foxgloves. So other than that, I haven't really done much. We did get the fountain leveled up. Let me show you what we did. So before it was leaning to that side really bad um, because we just plunked it right down on the mulch. And so it was just sinking gradually. 
So what we did is we lift the whole fountain out, we dug this area down about six or seven inches, and now it's sitting on a bed of gravel rather than a bed of dirt and mulch. So it's much more stable at this point. And I think this fountain is called, is it called the Hospitality Fountain? It's from Unique Stone and I absolutely love it. It doesn't make a lot of noise, but you can just see the movement of water and I really like the design of it. Love the pineapple. I like that it's not a perfect pineapple. Like there's something rustic about it. Okay, so I really wanna tackle the fountain first so that we're not trampling over anything new that we put in this bed. So I am going to call Aaron and ask him if he and Benjamin can come out and give me a hand. Oh, hi baby. Hey, do you wanna come out here? I'm by the ch I'm by the chicken coop. Oh, he's getting down. He, are you gonna come out here? Yeah, come on. I should probably go get an extension cord. Maybe there's already one in there. Do you see that? I see the end of one. So does it actually end in the proper place or did I cut it off? Hmm, no extension cord there. Well, there's already a pump in here. Probably doesn't work. Guess we should test it. Can tell who put this one away last. <laughs> I always put cords away in chaos. Aaron always puts them together in a really nice little loop. So we plug in here on the side of the chicken coop. I'm gonna have to see if I can paint the cord white this year. All right, let's see if this pump makes any noise. Nothing. So basically to put our new pump in, I have to take the pineapple off and then this is a separate piece here. And then we will pull the old fountain out so it goes down through the base here and then out the bottom. Hopefully this isn't super hard. Oh, hey baby. It's hot. It's hot here. It is hot, yeah. I'm thinking if I just kind of lean this because I'm in a good position, mm -hmm. I need you to pull this cord out. Okay. Um, it's not coming. There we go. Got it. Okay. I think I broke the stopper. Oh. Okay, so this is the old pump right here that doesn't work anymore, but I always keep it around just long enough to know whether or not I need this tubing. This is our new pump right here, and when Aaron was yanking the cord out, this cork broke, and that's what the cord runs through right through here to keep the water from leaking down. So I think I'm gonna still use this because if it is pinched in there tight enough, look at my arm, my hand is all dirty. I went up front and got the cork out of the Hebe fountain that we've never been able to run properly, but this is way too big. Mm. So all that effort for nothing, all that dirtiness for nothing. Dang. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna use this, but I'm also gonna be using a little bit of this putty. It's like we use it in fountains all the time, um, all the way around it, just to make sure we don't leak any water. Why did we pull it out by the way? We had to get rid of the old pump. Oh, we're putting a new pump in. That yeah, because this, yeah. pump, this pump is shot. I do have a restrictor so that when we use the tubing, this or whatever tubing I need to get, we can put the restrictor on and restrict the flow. But I think this one might have a restrictor built in. Uh, yeah, we've got an inline restrictor right here. However, this isn't going to work. So we're going to have to adapt this really quick. Here's how we're going to do it. Take this 
tubing off. This came with the pump, I think. Did that come with the pump? It must have. I'm gonna take the, oops. <laughs> Don't wanna wreck the box. I'm gonna take this off. Oh, I don't even know that we'll have to adapt. Maybe, I'll go get a clamp, a silver clamp real quick. Hold on, I'll be right back. Got this little clamp thing. These are always really handy to have around when you do anything with irrigation ah, or pumps. I feel like that should slide on a little bit easier. Okay, we're just gonna neck it down here. Oh my goodness, it won't stay. Probably because I'm like really impatient and I want this process to go fast because I really want to plant. I really don't want to set a fountain up right now. There we go, we're getting tighter. Okay, that shouldn't go anywhere. And where did I put the restrictor? Oh, down. I'm gonna just slide this one on just in case. This is plastic and this is metal, I trust metal more than I trust plastic. So we may not need this, but we might. And I would rather have it in place in the event that we do need it. Okay, so now we have to try to feed this cord back down through the bottom of the fountain, which worked pretty well the way we were doing it before. I just get down here and use my feet. It's like a leg press. I like your sunglasses. You know what we should do? Wanna play the game? Okay. Okay, we'll go inside in like two minutes, okay? Okay. So it goes through here. And then we need these pieces right here. So these will just clamp around this. That looks pretty darn good, but I'm gonna do this anyway. So I'm just gonna pack this putty in around just to make sure. Like it's wanting to stick to my hands pretty good right now, <laughs> which is a little problematic. Benjamin wants to go in and play with his cars really bad right now. Do you wanna play with your cars? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, all we have to do, bud, is fish the cord out from underneath here. You got it? Yep. <clears throat> Oh, success. Nice. Down it goes. The pineapple's kind of heavy. I got it off, but it was probably not something that I want to do again. Okay, now. Can you tip it? Okay, now just tip it right into place. Okay, did it come off? Hold on. No, I think it stayed put. Okay. I think we got it, and I think it's pretty level still. If it's not, we'll deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm not sure that we got it perfectly level, but that doesn't matter right now. <laughs> I don't want to lose light. So I'm going to fill it. We're going to plug it in, see how it works, and then I'm going to start planting. <laughs> Moment of truth. Oh. It's perfect. Isn't that nice? Make it closer. It does have a little sound. Oh, that makes me so excited. And the bowl does actually look fairly level. The water level's pretty decent on all sides. Okay, so now I'm going to plant right about where Russell's at. So I'm gonna start with the Heart of the Jungle elephant's ear and I wanted to give you some stats real quick. So 36 to 60 inches tall and then it says spacing on the back 36 to 60 inches. Um, I'm going to put them fairly close together because I'm planting them so late in the season. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use, I think I've got nine or 10 of them, and I'm going to put them all back in here. So I'll start them back by 
um, the rose there's a hibiscus right back in there and we'll just do a nice drift kind of right back behind the fountain it'll be a little bit thicker here and then it'll taper off to probably right in this area here um, but the tag says fold apart sun this area right here now that the elm tree isn't here it gets pretty strong morning sun like until early to mid afternoon and then it gets protection in the afternoon i was a little skeptical about the full sun because this looks like a tropical like it needs humidity it needs a little protection um it needs rain which are things that we don't have here so i actually texted uh the, our contacts at proven winners and i'm like full sun does that mean that they can handle our full sun and they said that they should be able to as long as they're getting enough water um, i'm still not really comfortable putting them out in a spot where they're going to get full-on direct afternoon sun so i think this will be a good location to test it out in first and i can run an individual emitter to each one of these plants so i make sure they're getting enough moisture and the only other thing i'm going to really keep my eye out for are spider mites now i inspected these plants and they are clean right now but this like this leaf right here it just screams spider mites to me <laughs> so it's something that i'm gonna have to watch it's one of our biggest pests out here in the garden and they tend to like these big broad leaves like this so i'm just gonna go ahead and lay out all the plants get them planted and then i'll give you a little tour of the area just because i'm a little bit pressed for time and there's still a couple other things i want to get done in here Okay, just real quick, I just had to stop and show you because I think this is gonna look so good after they put on a little bulk in size. I think the other reason this is gonna be a perfect spot is that the wind travels this direction, so they will have some protection from all the wind we get. Oh, I love it. Now coleus. pre-planting tour so gorgeous oh my goodness I'm so excited all right here we go goodness you guys isn't it so pretty I absolutely love the color combination because here we have the peach colored foxglove with the golden dreams so that's one of my favorite color combos right there then we have the really bold leaf in the back we've got the white so a really nice bright pop we've got the pinkish red kind of purple color with the hookra and then the blue purple up front and the blue and the peach look really good together as well. Oh, I'm just so happy with it. I'll show you from this side. So if you look back in there, we have the nice layers with the elephant's ear in the back, some nice texture with that coleus. I love the spire blooms of the delphiniums and foxgloves kind of towering above everything. And then the next layer down is the veronica and then the hookra and then the supertunias. It is just beautiful. And imagine once it's filled in, it will be a stunner. Like if these elephant ears really take to this spot, I think it's just gonna be amazing. I did uh, trim off one of the tops of the coleus. And I just popped it down in the 
fountain because it will probably form some roots. <laughs> May as well, it looks kind of pretty right there. Okay, just two things left. So stump and vine killer next. I'm not gonna have to do near as much of this as I thought I was going to because I ended up digging up some of the suckers when I was using the auger to dig the holes for the super tunias. And I know the roots are still there so they'll probably come up but I didn't wanna do any treating around like in the same hole as a super tunia that would not be wise. Um, so I just really have one little spot to treat so I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. And then with the iron tone, all I need to do is sprinkle that around the base of the plants that are showing signs of chlorosis. And I'm gonna go ahead and treat the maple even though it's not showing chlorosis because maples tend to get it in our area. And if this is a problem spot, I'm just gonna go ahead and start treating the maple so that I don't have to deal with that problem later. So I just started brushing the mulch away from where these suckers are and they just popped right off, like underneath the soil surface. This is really the only thing, see that? How that root is spreading and then it just shoots up growth right here. So that's really it. It almost doesn't even feel worth treating at the moment. I could just cut it off, but I'm gonna treat it anyway. Here we go. So I'll cut it off right there expose some branch and then this has a brush built right in so i don't even have to mix anything up it's awesome and we'll just brush it right on top of that fresh cut and that will take care of it isn't that insanely easy we did a video oh i don't know a month or two ago where i treated the ash suckers that were coming up where the ash trunk used to be and i haven't seen any regrowth at all yet um, which i would think in that amount of time they're usually so vigorous that if they're going to push more growth they would have already done it so anyway i just feel like this is such a super fast effective way to deal with those problem suckers that just keep coming back now i'm not talking about suckers that come up around the tree like the base of a tree that you want to keep um, like for example crab apples i have crab apples that send up suckers this is not what you use that will hurt the tree. If you wanna save the tree but kill the suckers, there is a product called Sucker Punch. Um, and we'll probably be doing a video on that. In fact, I have some in the barn uh, because I do need to treat it, but I'm not sure that right now is the best time to treat them. I don't know, I'm gonna do a little bit of research uh, because I haven't used that product in so long. Used it before and it does work. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure like, be careful with this stuff because this is a complete killer. Um, and if it, you're wanting to save whatever is shooting up the suckers, like the main part of the tree, use Sucker Punch, not this. All right, last item on the agenda. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna even really be able to show you. It's so thick in there. I'm just basically gonna pour it around the base of these plants and then water it in. Let's take one final look through the area. This is kind of our before shot, before some of the plants we planted today fill in. You might remember I had a wall planter on this side of the chicken coop last year, and I just have craved simplicity a little bit this year. Just because there's wall space doesn't mean I need to fill it, and I think it can kind of distract a little bit. Just too much stuff sometimes. I have an arbor there on the left side that has a clematis, and that is plenty of interest, I think, especially once the elephant ears fill in like if they do reach I'm not sure that they're gonna reach the full potential of you know height wise but I'm guessing they're gonna be at least this tall but that wall planter I still have all the same plants in it it's in the greenhouse it looks great and you know I'll probably get in the mood to put something on there at another point just not now I think we'll leave it on that right there oh it's so pretty and there's the evening light streaming through you can see there's a uh, variegated iris back in here and a red Japanese maple. The sweet pe peas I planted in these containers this winter, like in January, they're blooming now. Oh, it's so pretty. And I usually take about five minutes to cool off before putting my face back in front of the camera because uh, I am a pretty like pretty sweaty mess at this point. But this didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to. I looked at the time when I called Aaron to come out and help with the fountain and it was 7.05 when I called him and it's 8.30 now. So it took a little less than an hour and a half to do the whole thing, the fountain um, and all the planting. So thankful for that. It just looks so pretty. And yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope that it was interesting to you. I'm really excited about these elephant ears. I mean, I can't believe I've gone this many years without even trying them. I have a couple more in the greenhouse that I think I'm gonna put a couple in the shady area just to see what they do, and a couple in a container. Just so I feel like I have some well-rounded experience with them. And I'm sure I'll learn a lot this year and you know, be able to apply what I learned to consecutive years as we do. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.